Good afternoon, everyone. Thursday. Go ahead and drop in the chat. Where are you joining, joining us from? Welcome, welcome, folks just getting in. Welcome. Let's see what we have. Who's representing St. Louis? Woo woo. Uh, we have Miami, we have Houston, Memphis, Milwaukee in the house. Okay. We have Portland, more Florida. Corals, Florida is really, really in here. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started today. What we're going to do is we are doing our coach call and we'll be doing these monthly. And our coach call today is really going to focus around feedback and Tim O feedback specifically. So we're really thinking about how to uh, take it a step further when we're having our coaching conversations and really give feedback uh, that resonates with people. A little bit about our shared understandings is we're asking that you go ahead and mute your mic. And if you want to share, we want to be able to benefit from the collective wisdom in the room. So when you're ready to share your expertise, if you could hit that hand raise uh, feature, it just helps us because our Zoom screens, we have multiple Zoom screens of, of people so that we, way we can know who's talking, but we wanna hear from you. We're asking that you're mindful, that you're present and that you are kind to yourself and others. My name is Sherry Lofton. I'm the Associate Director of Learning Delivery. I'm joining you from St. Louis, Missouri. And today we also have facilitating with us, Jeremy, Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy McBrayer, Associate Director of Onboarding and Coaching on the Digital Promise team. Awesome. And we also have mentor coach Jeremiah. Hi, everyone. I'm our mentor coach at Spark Academy here in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Awesome. Awesome. And today we also have moderators with the mostest. We have several associate directors ready to share their expertise with you in your breakout rooms. Aaron, Savannah, David, Mallory, Camden, and Kasha. So we're so happy that they are joining us as well. Our agenda today is just going to look like we're going to start off with an inclusion activity and then we're going to move into this idea about Tim feedback and what happens when we're giving feedback. Uh, we're going to then move into uh, addressing challenges. So you'll tell us, what are your challenges? What are you uh, working on right now that might be a little sticky or tricky? And you'll be able to get, uh, to get knowledge and, and get some understanding from that specific challenge. So we'll be able to tailor it to your needs today. Our goals is that we want you to one, be comfortable with doing a Timo and giving Timo feedback. And we want you to walk away with some, some, some solutions that you can use right away. This work that we're doing aligns with our Bills Initiative outcomes. It looks familiar, but we're really working on the feedback that we're giving so that we can have an impact on the classroom level, what's happening for students every day. This work also aligns to our six elements of success. So specifically our ongoing professional learning, uh, we want to continue to learn and to grow. So let's start it out with a little inclusion activity. We're going to ask, that you uh, tell us uh, something. So we're gonna put in the chat for you uh, this link to this mentee. Let's see, get it in there. There we go. You can click on that link. And when you, join, when you hit that link, it'll ask you, what describes you as a coach? What words describe you? So let us know, what describes you as a coach? And if you don't feel like doing the minty, you can drop it in the chat. Tell us, what describes you as a coach? What are some words? Mm. I'm seeing listener popping up. I'm seeing that more than one time. Approachable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Patient. I like that one. Fun. 
solutions. Yes, yes. I love it. Supportive. Yes, that is what our colleagues need. And uh, that is what we are there for. Open, I like that. Open, fun, solution oriented, good listener. I, I'm really loving this. I'm loving this. Yes. So I want to take this a step further. And as we think about um, who we are as coaches, we're encouraging, I see someone saying, we're going to take that with us as we think about uh, how we're helping people to do something that is an innate human need to learn and to grow. So when we do our work, we'll be taking all of this with us, the solution-oriented listener, openness, being approachable. So awesome. All right. So now we are going to move to some of the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, we'll have Jeremy walk us through some uh, need to know dates for Timo. Yeah, hi everybody. And um, for those of you who have been in the program for, for more than a year or for more than this year, you already know these uh, kind of rough estimates of her dates, but we have two Tim windows um, where we like to get our Timos done in. And we ask that you complete 80 Timos for 80% of your teachers twice a year. And one of those is, is essentially first semester. Um, so through the end of January, uh, January 28th, I believe is that Friday is why, why it's that date. And then um, once again, you'll do it for 80% of your teachers from February 13th through the end of June. So it doesn't have to be the same 80% of teachers each time. Um, and you're not limited to doing 80% of your teachers. You can do 100% of your teachers, which is, would be amazing. You can do them multiple times, which can give you more data, also give you more things to talk to your coaches about, more, more coaching points, more, um, more insight into what they're doing in their classroom every day. So um, these are just uh, kind of estimates for you. 80% um, is, is the minimum. Do it before the end of January and then reset it for February 13th through the end of the year. Awesome. Thank you for that, Jeremy. And now we're moving into this idea of feedback. So we want to start off, uh, Coach Jeremiah has some words of wisdom he's going to start off with. And we're going to take it to, uh, to uh, Coach Jeremiah. Hi, everyone. Uh, one of the things to kind of get us in this mindset of feedback is to consider that often we will say words as coaches and our intentions are really great. And the words that come up out of our mouths are essentially really great, but they can be interpreted as not so great, or maybe uh, there's a mistake in the channel of communication. Uh, and to, to get us into that, what I want us to do is think about the feedback that Gregory gets here in uh, uh, this clip from Abbott Elementary. And I want you to think about, okay, what is the intent of the people giving Gregory feedback? And then also, what is the impact of that feedback on Gregory? Uh, so go ahead and note that to yourself, then we'll come together and we'll talk about it a little bit after we see the clip. I have enlisted the help of one of Abbott Elementary's finest. Now, come on, come on, show us what you got. <clears throat> what, here? Yeah, yeah here. You can get this kid. Of course here. Come on, teach us something. Uh, all right. Um, Farmer Hank has seven turkeys, then he buys six more. How many turkeys does Farmer Hank now have? Hmm. Is one of the turkeys pregnant? One of my kids asked the same thing. Because it's a good question. And it shows that they're using critical thinking. It's irrelevant. No, it might be silly to you, but to them it might be an important question that if they don't get it answered, they can't focus. And diversions are an important part of learning. Otherwise, they're just memorizing. Memorization is how I learn all the state's capitals. Juno, Salem, Madison. I keep going. In my class, we do silly voice time to, you know, break up the day. And it makes learning more fun, too. OK. <laughs> Follow my lead. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now, son. Moving those hips a little, it is not going to kill you. Now, let's do this math problem again. Oh, what's the turkey farmer's name? Hank? Yes. Right. Hank has two turkeys. He gets two more. How many turkeys? Hank has two turkeys. He gets two more. How many turkeys? He has four. 
Or six if one of the turkeys is pregnant with twins. <laughs> See? Who told you learning can't be fun? Hmm. I've never been healthier. Shingles doesn't care, but Shingrix protects. Proven over 90% effective. That was your shingles warning of the day, everyone. All right, go share my... Uh... <laughs> so now, as you as you saw from the video again, uh, Gregory is receiving the feedback and he has some feedback givers. So what we want to do is kind of move you into some, some groups just to talk about, uh, some breakout groups to talk about the intent of the feedback that Gregory received and how it impacted him. So go ahead and do that and have a brief conversation in some breakout rooms. We're all back now. All right. So everyone had an opportunity to, to kind of have a small sided conversation about intent and impact. And now I'd like to open it up to the whole group. So I know you all had wonderful partners, thought partners in your rooms, but we didn't get to hear what everybody had to say. We were limited to the people we were with. So would anyone love to uh, comment on so what they saw first as the intent of Barbara and Melissa's coaching tips to Gregory. The floor is yours. Uh, I can go. Um, so her intent was positive, right? She had good intentions, but she was for, uh, forceful about it. Uh, so we said that because she was forceful, he was not as recept receptive. So it goes back to building that report and that relationship and knowing your staff and knowing who you're able to be like that with because they need it and who you need to lay back off and allow them to come to you uh, instead of being forceful. I definitely have to agree with Burley in the sense that she was very forceful. The intent was good. The intent was you know, on more of a positive note, but there was really no input from the teacher as to what he wanted to do or what he decided to do, why he was doing what he was doing. And as a coach, I think it's our job and our responsibility to come alongside the teacher and be a partner rather than a, you know, a strict dictator of this is what you should do and this is how you should do it because they have their own way of teaching. And like someone said in our room, um, that, you know, you don't know what their background was. You don't know what their educational style is. You don't know, you know, what impact education has had on them and that maybe that's why they are the way that they are. Um, but I definitely think he would have benefited from maybe watching someone else in their classroom and see the impact that the kids were having with that teacher's style to see what his thoughts were, his inner, internal thoughts, if that makes sense. <clears throat> style itself, because I kind of looked at style also, style is up to the individual teacher, right? Regardless of their experience, we all have a style that's learning and growing and building. And as a coach, sure, we can kind of give ideas. I think they were trying to give ideas on how to differentiate instruction, right? And you know, I'm not going to lie, no one's getting me to dance. Like, that's just not going to happen. And I think that's where the relationship building comes into play, where you kind of have to know who you're coaching, um, you know, like as much as possible or as much as they'll give you, right? Because you can't force that out of them. But watching them, seeing what they're really good at and using that as ways to give them more ideas on how to use what they're good at, what they excel at to grow even more. Awesome. Uh, let's quickly jump to the impact so, so we can move forward. But did anyone notice what was the impact then on Gregory from that? that feedback when he breaks the fourth wall and stares at the camera uh that was the impact he was uh yeah, he was not having it <laughs> absolutely and jeff you you covered that yeah that that like knowing who he is right like uh-uh you're not getting me to do that 
I would also probably say that the overall impact in the long term is that Gregory will probably not come to these teachers at all for any form of coaching or anything. They've already taken the trust of a older coaching position and not only put two older people, uh, sorry, not older people, experienced uh, coaches into the same room and kind of almost belittled him a little bit for not being open to it but also been like, yeah, you got to go ahead and do that. Now go and do that. There's no other way to do it, but the way that we just told you. Uh, if, if I was Gregory, I would, I would never approach those teachers again. <laughs> and Nathaniel, that is, that is so apt and right on, like, absolutely. So the impact goes well beyond Gregory to like the school, right? Now he's sort of like, whoa, don't go to these people. And, and that is, you know, that is not something we want a reputation for, especially as coaches. I'm still trying to master that facial expression that Gregory does there. So I'm going to work on it and I'll get back to you at our next meeting. Uh, I'll teach you with that impression. I was going to add on that. <laughs> I was going to add a little comment too. You know, they, the coaches didn't act as collaborators. They came in with just deciding what was going to happen. And so instead of questioning and guiding him to that realization of what he needs, so then he can take ownership of that you know, um, you know, because that's our goal, right, is to guide the teachers and, and collaborate, not to be top down, you know, but to be that teammate, that partner. So anyway, I think that was part of it, too, is there was none of that. You know, there was no clear understanding of what, you know, even his goal was or what he was to be working on. So. Absolutely, Diane, and, and thank you so much. That's actually a perfect segue into kind of the next step. So now we're taking it into, okay, we've talked about intent, we've talked about impact, and now let's really characterize effective and ineffective feedback. So now we're going to use a chat box, and I want everyone here to think about, okay, what is the time when I received really effective feedback? What were the characteristics of that feedback that made it so effective? And then what, what does ineffective feedback look like, sound like, feel like? So go ahead and we're just going to use a chat box and get a running list of those things. So think of as many characteristics. And if you could in the chat box, put effective colon, you know, is directly given to me instead of via email, whatever it is. So we know if you're talking about effective or ineffective feedback, go ahead and do that now. We'll take about a minute just to list those things. Oh, I'm seeing some really uh, wonderful characteristics, even things I haven't think about, thought about, like uh, response to a request as opposed to just out of the blue, uh, real examples without op opinions of really remaining objective, uh, feels genuine, non-threatening. Uh, when feedback comes in the form of questions, sort of unpack it uh, to build ownership amongst teachers, glows and grows, both positive and negative, constructive and actionable. This is awesome. Well-timed, ineffective, negative tone states what is wrong, but not paying attention to what is going well. ineffective, told what to do, uses the words you should instead of granting ownership and, and a little bit of autonomy to the teacher. Excellent. So as we, as we think about feedback and as we think about effective and ineffective feedback, we obviously as coaches have a responsibility to make our feedback as effective as possible. And so Throughout the rest of today, we're really looking at how do we have conversations that create a culture of feedback and some of the things that you hinted at, whether it's building trust through those conversations or whether it's making sure that we have a clear path forward and a clear goal that we're being directed about. So we have some experts here from Vils um, who are just going to take the reins and run with it. And, and we're kind of going to move into uh, 
some groups based on choice and Sherry's gonna bring us forward through the presentation to do that. Awesome, thank you, Coach uh, Jeremiah. And Coach Jeremiah will also be uh, talking more about some of those things, um, some of the resistance that we look at and we encounter when we're receiving or giving feedback. He uh, has some really amazing things that he'll be uh, talking uh, about uh, coming up in his breakout room. But we're, as we're thinking about feedback, we're thinking about uh, feedback, egos, and safe spaces. And when I'm looking at the chat, I'm seeing a lot um, that even talks to that. As, as humans, we have this need to want to learn and grow, but we also have a need to protect ourselves. And what happens is there's, there's a science of feedback. Uh, we have to continual, continuously uh, make sure that we have a healthy ego as we're being able to check uh, and check that ego as we're being able to receive feedback. And then that's also something to consider when we're giving it. Uh, what happens is when we receive feedback, um, some things happen. The amygdala in our brain is in charge of making sure they decide, is this a threat or is this safe? So our body is, is coming up with that decision as someone says, starts to give you feedback, unsolicited or any, any type of feedback. And, and so what happens is beforehand humans, a lot of our threats were physical. Now they're psychological, especially in our workplace. So when we're thinking about, is this person safe to receive feedback from? Uh, we're thinking about uh, what's the intention behind this person giving me feedback? Um, will there be implications for my job, uh, my reputation? So a lot of the body systems go into play, the adrenals, the cortisol. And what we have to do as coaches, uh, we have to really be empathetic uh, about what it feels like to receive feedback. Um, so that way, when we're giving feedback, we're over communicating that it's a super safe space that we're super uh, safe. Um, so I saw that in the chat when we're not, um, and, and like Nathaniel talked about, you know, not just, you know, giving something top down, but making it something where uh, the coach uh, has uh, agency and they're, and they're uh, talking about the direction they want to go. Another thing we'll want to do is ask for permission to give feedback. I saw Aaron say out of the blue. Um, and, you know, we don't want to uh, go into giving feedback if someone's emotionally charged or activated. And same for us, think, paying attention to our space. Uh, have we just gotten out of a meeting? Or is there something where we're emotionally charged and then we're moving to another meeting to, to offer feedback? So we'll pay attention to those things. In our book, The Art of Coaching, that you all have, on page 153, um, Elena Aguilar talks about giving feedback. So we'll look more into that as we continue on with our demos. But now I wanna throw it over to you. And I wanna ask you, what, are, what aspects of coaching are um, the most challenging to you right now? As, especially when we're think thinking about going into classrooms and doing tempo observations. I know there's something over my screen right now. I'm trying to turn on my, uh, my, annotations. There we go. They're on. So go ahead and mark on my screen. I have um, five different challenges on my screen. If you can uh, mark on my screen with your annotation tool, mark a little mark under what's, what's the most challenging to you right now. If for whatever reason, technology is being technology for the day, you can go ahead and drop the corresponding number in the chat and uh, instead. What, what's, what, what is it for you? Is it finding time uh, to observe and debrief? Is it understanding how to observe using the Timo tool? Is it getting teacher buy-in to, uh, uh, to even go through this coaching process with you? Is it giving feedback to teachers with various resistance levels? Or is it understanding and uh, looking at that Tim data, being able to pull it to see what next steps to take and what uh, conversations to have? So you, you tell us what is, and let me look in this chat and see where, where we're landing with that. I'm seeing, oh, you like it, Laura, woo! <laughs> yes, yes. I'm seeing some uh, more fours, more on the feedback. I'm seeing some twos there, three, uh, the buy-in and the finding time. Okay, all right, well, this is good information. Now, let me, let me screenshot this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, um, there we go. 
we're going to go into rooms and I'm going to give you an option to choose one of these. So if it's a uh, finding time, so look at your number, look at which one you are having the most trouble with. That's the number of the breakout room that you're going to go into. So when we go in these breakout rooms, you'll choose a room of interest and you will go into the breakout room that corresponds to the challenge area you're having or your room um, of interest. So I'm gonna open those rooms momentarily. You'll be able to choose which room you go into. I have them on the screen here. And so I'm gonna go and now the rooms are open. We'll go in those rooms and you'll be able to learn from your colleagues. Please, if you have things to share, please share them um, so that we can all learn from the collective wisdom in those breakout rooms. And then we'll come back and share before we close. So you are able to go ahead and go into your rooms. If you need help getting into a room, I'm here and uh, we'll uh, welcome back. Thank you for all of uh, your your presence in those rooms. And I'm curious, what, what, were, what were we talking about? Uh, what were some key takeaways or something that you heard from a colleague or uh, one of our associate directors? What's, what's something you heard? Put in the chat and come off mute. So we were in the process of being shared something amazing um, with Erin. She was talking about timesheet and the hashtag, but we were cut off. Is there a way that she could continue with that or? You know, we are we're um, coming to our close. Okay, uh, but that's fine. Thank you. But but we but we will continue it. That's feedback, so we can make sure that we grab some time so that we can somehow continue this conversation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Any anybody else? So we got timesheet going in there with Aaron. Let me look at my chat. Oh, there we go. I saw a lot of good conversations. So I'm excited. Let's see what what's this. Oh, Savannah yes. shared a resource. Oh, go ahead. I hear somebody. I was just going to say, Sherry, we had a lot of amazing resources shared in our breakout room. So we just wanted to paste those for the whole group here. So a lot of you guys want to check those out. Yes, awesome. I'm so excited. So yeah, I'll um, I'll have to keep all these, uh, curate all these resources. And what we do have is we have a, a, a Padlet. So this is one thing last year is that we, um, we had a Padlet that we curated th throughout the year. And it was very, uh, it was very good for us to be able to uh, keep resources. So I'll start putting those resources on this Padlet. I encourage you to as well. We will take all of your feedback and make these coach calls what you want them to be. So today's coach call was based on all the feedback that we've been getting um, as far as what people are most interested in. And that's what we'll continue to do based on your feedback. It'll be an iterative process. So just um, with our next steps, I do want to make sure uh, that you know what's coming up. So next steps, we want you to uh, continue to, to do Timos in your uh, schools or start. So it's okay if you're just getting started, go ahead and get those started and put those, uh, those and document that in the Tim platform. And then we want you to hold feedback conversations with teachers using the tips learned. And so we have some resources. Again, they will be on that curated Padlet, but we also, I wanna bring your attention to the instructional uh, coach playbook here. This is um, this playbook is uh, the new one. So many people have been talking about the playbook and they have uh, the previous version, but I want to make sure that you have the new uh, version and I'll put that in the chat um, just so you know everything that you need to know is in this coach playbook or it's in the implementation guide. And the only way I know how to get to the implementation guide is by going to the coach playbook. It's the, um, the second strategy. You just click there for the implementation guide. Uh, so we wanna make sure you get that. I'll drop that in the chat in just a second. But also um, on this deck, and I'll, let me put this deck in the chat because it has all of our resources. There we go. On this deck, it has our Tim tools for coaches on the LMS. So you can learn more about Tim by going on our learning management system. And we have things there. We have some documents to aid in feedback in addition to that page 153 of Elena Aguilar. So we have some links here. And then here, 
I'll be curating all of our calls throughout the year. So that way you don't have to go to a lot of places and look for a lot of different links. I'll start curating it on our slide decks. So that way you can go back and see what all of our previous calls were about. Um, if you remember someone said something or had a great resource. So here are some things about Tim, some um, short videos that you can learn uh, more about Tim with. Um, we also have some videos from last uh, school year about the TLC, just because some folks were asking for uh, some uh, supports with that. And so we have some really great uh, TLC links there. Here's our upcoming coach call schedule. So uh, next month in December, we have our mastermind. So we'll start those and that'll be December 1st. We have a virtual conference coming up on December 8th, but you'll be able to see the full trajectory of the year here. I'm asking that you go ahead and fill out uh, one of our feedback surveys so that I can uh, help us change. Let me put it everyone in the meeting. There we go. That way we can change these, uh, these coach calls to your needs. So we will make them exactly what you want them to be. Please go ahead and uh, fill out that feedback form and we will uh, we'll continue working for you on the back end. So that is all we have for today. And if no one has told you today, you are more than enough. Thank you, coaches. Talk to y'all soon.